Brought to you by Titan Shop. We'll get that QR code back on the screen for you to service all of your Cal State Fullerton apparel needs. We are ready to roll here on a Sunday afternoon. Game three of the season. The Titans coming at one and one. So do the Catamounts of the University of Vermont. It is Vincent Lee with the tip, and we are underway. Latrell Wrightsell will get us going. Latrell Wrightsell, Torrey San Antonio, Max Jones, Jalen Harris, Vincent Lee, the five on the floor for Coach Diedrich Taylor. Jones flips it to the corner. Little extra pass. Almost looked like Wrightsell got away with a bit of a walk, but... Possession continues on here. Cal State Fullerton in the Navy Blues with orange treads. Vermont in the whites. Here's a turnover taken away. That's Aaron Deloney out of Portland, Oregon. He has been a bit of an asp uh, uh, aspiration for this team to really get going offensively. But somebody who has really emerged, especially in the preseason, for Vermont as one of their pure scores. He's joined by Dylan Penn, as well as Nick Fiorillo and Robin Duncan. That was Duncan with the ball. In the corner, tries a three, gets it to fall. Robin Duncan, the grad senior out of Evansville, Indiana, six for eight in their last game against St. Mary's. They opened up the season against Brown. They won that game. Struggled against the better team in the West Coast Conference, but he was the really the lone bright spot offensively for the Catamounts. And like you see with that possession there, that's just too much space for him. He does. He needs very little space to get that shot off. Max Jones struggled in his first game against San Diego State. Got things going a little bit against Pepperdine in the win on Friday. A pure score coming from the University of Tampa, Jalen Harris. Nope, that's Latrell Reitzel with the floater. It rims out. Rebound tracked down by Finn Sullivan, the University of San Diego transfer. Vermont, seven newcomers, much like Cal State Fullerton, a team that nobody knows really what to expect. But they, the difference is they were picked to finish first in the American East. They have made the tournament in five of the last six seasons. They have not won a tournament game since 2005, though, when they took down an upset against Syracuse. There's Vincent Lee getting off the score in Schneid for the first Titan points. That's what you're going to want to see from your senior leader getting a hot start off of Fullerton. Again, you want to, Fullerton was very successful against Pepperdine when they got it inside. That's where they got a lot of their points in the first and second half. Good ball movement to Dylan Penn. He actually broke his hand in the preseason. That allowed Aaron Deloney to get extra playing time and emerge as one of the starters for this program. Now Sullivan back out for three. Duncan, this one a little short. He tracks down his own board. Long shots, long rebounds. Penn wants to go at it. No good. Rebound tracked down by Vincent Lee. Lee, the Nevada transfer, didn't play for the Wolfpack his freshman year, and boy, has he been an integral part of Diedrich Taylor's squad, especially during that tournament run last year. Max Jones penetrates. How about Max Jones? Oh, a little too hard. And then a foul is called. Vincent Lee on the box out will get tallied with a foul. What I like to see there was Jones getting attacking the middle. That's where they're going to really be able to become successful against the Catamounts, making sure they penetrate not only just the middle to make sure that they suck the defense in. It's going to open up the, the perimeter for a lot of their shooters on the offensive end. Finn Sullivan, a 5-4 Swiss Army knife, if you will. He can do a bit of everything, doing it himself off the back iron though, on the right shoulder jumper. Jones tracks down the board. He leads the charge. Jalen Harris coming off of a career high on Friday in points. We'll swing it up top, and Reitzel will reset. And Vincent Lee was able to draw a foul on Nick Fiorillo. And that'll be a reset under the hoop. 3-2, both teams, bit of a struggle early. I will say, though, Vermont has gotten some decent looks. First ever matchup between these two schools. This is quite a road trip for the Catamounts. They started at St. Mary's. Dropped that game 79 to 53. Their first 20 plus point loss since 2018. Eight on the shot clock. San Antonio unloads a three. This one falls and the foul. I like the patience on that. You see he set it up with the, the jab step there, slowing the defender there. And just a nice solid shot. Let's see if he can finish a four point play and again. Last time, Antonio was actually fouled on the three, and he didn't, he didn't go in, but he made all three free throws, which for some people is rare. Well, now he's looking to try and hit the four-point play. Somebody who's been struggling offensively, a very stout defender as he does get the and one. Maybe that'll get a little bit of offensive injection for him. Titans up 6-3 to three here on a small 6 nothing spurt. Here's Aaron Deloney, the senior out of Portland, Oregon. He went to Grant High School. He was actually the runner-up for Oregon Gatorade Player of the Year in the OSA. Fiorillo got pushed by Latrell Reitzel under the hoop. And this is the thing about both these teams. 
they're undersized. Vincent Lee, the, really the only true big man in the starting rotation for Coach Diedrich Tra Taylor. The same for Nick Fiorillo, 6'8", 225. Lee, about the same. Right, and you have right cell underneath at 6'3", just trying to battle his way in. So you're going to want to stay strong, obviously, to an extent to where you don't foul, but you can't get punked down there. Penn able to penetrate with a floater. Dylan Penn, the grad transfer, he went to Bellarmine, a team that in their first season in Division I won their conference last year, the A-Sun, but they weren't tournament eligible because of the transition period. Had a great season for Bellarmine and then moved on to Vermont where they are expecting a big season out of him. Here's San Antonio with a little bump, a fader, can't get the roll. Max Jones tried the second effort. But Finn Sullivan brings it up. Now Deloney. He can get hot. Torrey San Antonio slapping it away. And right now, it was his own look for Fullerton. It didn't matter. Aaron Deloney splashes home a corner triple. And actually, are they saying it? No, that was a three. Eight to six. Vermont back in front. I, I, I'm not going to be surprised here. We see a lot of lead changes, especially the way these two teams are competing. Harris all the way to the rack. Leaves it a little short. John Becker, his 12th season at the helm for Vermont, prides himself as a defensive head coach that turns into offense. And his team moves the ball so well with the swap by Lee behind. A recovery and a Nick Ferrarillo layup follows, though. And that's how you stick with it if you're the big man. Right, and that's one of the things that allowed Pepperdine last on Friday to get the lead. Those second chance points are something that Florida needs to tighten up on. That's just easy points leaving on the floor. How about this one? John Becker, the head coach of Vermont, is 148 and 28 in conference games. I would say that's a pretty good record as Lee flushes it down with the left hand. Definitely a pretty good record, but I think the Titans have some for that tonight. We'll see. <laughs> well, this isn't a conference game, so it wouldn't go against that record, but uh, he is 258 and 103 overall, so still very good numbers for the head coach in his 12th season. Here's Fiorillo down low. Nice feed, nice dime, turning into two for Finn Sullivan. What I like for the count amounts is they're finding the gaps, they're finding the spaces and cutting into those spaces. And the defense of Fullerton needs to react and when a cutter goes through. Right, what was, our, what was our key of the game for Fullerton? Fill those gaps. They've really struggled here in the early, about six minutes or so to do that. Max Jones in the corner. He was the runner National Division II player of the year last year at the University of Tampa. Goes Lee on the near baseline. Lee spins, drops, offensive foul. And that's two quick fouls on Vincent Lee. Now you have... A bit of a, a, a questionable smirk on your face. You disagree with the call? I feel like they both both are aggressive. Both are trying to have some contact there. So, uh. so Vincent Lee will check out with two early fouls. This could work in Vermont's favor. But Garrison Wade, who has been in the, a pebble in the opponent's shoe in the opening two games, big time transfer from Dartmouth, who actually played against Vermont last year, had 13 big points for Dartmouth. Will check in along is Deshaun Eaton. Eaton on defense, trying to guard Deloney. Deloney hits the deck, draws a foul. Deshaun Eaton, another transfer. He went to Howard Community College last season. 16 points per game, five rebounds. Very efficient, was a first-teamer. And he's going to be tasked with guarding that guy. Seen also in this last play, too, here. You, you can't reach in like that if you're a Bastion. I mean, just hold your ground. Maybe try to get in there for a charge. Oh, Fiorillo lost his footing. Fast break on the other end. Wade gets blocked up high by Dylan Penn. And that's just tough. First-team A-Sun in 2021. Had a ton of defensive plays for Bellarmine. Had a block against St. Mary's, and here he is checking in with one this afternoon. Up high off the glass goes Robin Duncan. And Vermont right now extending their lead up by six. Everybody was asking, how would Vermont fare in the post-Ryan Davis era? Ryan Davis, a two-time AEC player of the year, and, well, it seems like they sort of figured out their identity playing a little 2-3 zone defense right now. Great job on the penetration, though, by Torrey San Antonio. I like the heads I saw there to stand up the defense. I was able to allow him to go all the way there, there to the basket. And, of course, Cal State Fullerton, I mean, they're replacing their top three scorers, namely E.J. Anasicki. And it's the next man up, Jalen Harris, right now filling that role, but they're going to need more than just Harris offensive. This is Cam Gibson, the grad senior out of Western Carolina, who just checked in. Penn tries a three, can't get it. Titans transition opportunity. Latrell slows things up, swings it to Deshaun Eaton, spinning, swerving, stopping, and kicks it back out for a reset. 15 on the clock for Reitzel. Steps into a long two. It's off the back iron. Penn tracks down the board. No good on the three by Nick Fiorillo. And right now, I think if you're the Titans defensively, you'll take those quick 
misses on the uh, Vermont side and then turn the transition points on the other side. That's what you want to see. Keep it to one shot, rebound, and run. That's the that's formula that's going to let Fullerton come back in this game right now. As you can see, they're now only down two. Yeah, quick spurt here for the Titans, trailing by two. Duncan sees it into the corner pen. Penetrates back out. Duncan straight away triple. It's no good off right. I'm surprised they're giving Duncan that much space. But again, with him being that driver that can score, I see why Phil Hutton is sagging him off. Let him settle for the three. Six for eight and field goals for Duncan in the last game against St. Mary's. As we mentioned earlier, the lone bright spot offensively for this team. San Antonio now. Oh, that's a tough screen. And a good job by Ferrarillo to fight through it and stick with Torrey. Ten on the shot clock. Latrell calling out the offense. Nobody's moving. They're waiting for a Lathaniel Bastion screen. In the corner, San Antonio with three on the shot clock. In, out, and back in. It drops. Two threes for Torrey San Antonio. And the Titans lead by one. And that's what you'd like to see from a player who's usually what he does doesn't get to show up on the stat sheet. So I'm love to see that he's contributing on the offensive end. Starters brought to you by Ant Ant Ontario International Airport. Boy, was that difficult to pronounce. You saw Jalen Harris, Max Jones, Latrell Reitzel, Vincent Lee was since checked out with two fouls. And Torrey San Antonio, the starting five for Diedrich Taylor. San Antonio with a steal but he saves it right to Fiorillo. Down low, the dish jam, the jam. And that's how Vermont will regain a one-score lead. On the other side for UVM, you saw Aaron Deloney, Dylan Penn, Finn Sullivan, Nick Fiorillo, and Robin Duncan. The five on the floor for John Becker. Becker, a six-time AEC coach of the year. San Antonio wants a third, and he is feeling it from outside, Carolyn Gill. I like that. That's what I like to see. Three for three from three. San Antonio. Last year, his season high was only eight points. Only averaged three points per game. And he really struggled from beyond the arc this season. First two games, not so great here in this one. As Deloney leaves one short. 50-50 ball goes to the Titans. San Antonio's feeling pretty darn good from beyond the arc. I don't know if you noticed, but the intensity on that defense possession from Fullerton picked right on up. John Becker wants the chat, so we'll step Ali just down the road. He went to Rancho Verde High School. He was dubbed as the 11th player in California. He was one of the highest recruits at Cal State Fullerton at the time. Played 25 games his freshman campaign, 13 his sophomore campaign, and 26 last year. And here he is in his third game. All the way to the rack, Latrell right, so no, that's Max Jones leaving it off the glass. Hilary Ayo Falei checking in, by the way, for Vermont. Only played three minutes against St. Mary's College, so this will be his second opportunity of the season to see action. Finn Sullivan into the corner. Cam Gibson uncorks a three. The grad transfer from Western Carolina is on the board. He really struggled in the opening two games just a combined three for eight from the field. But he gets going with a one for one start here. Harris been held scoreless. Missed the layup earlier. Spins into the corner. Jones thought about the three. Puts it to Becky. You could hear the slap. And that was a late whistle to be blown when he went up. But they're going to call it side out. I was going to say we heard that from all the way yeah. up here. And we had the <laughs> headphones on. <laughs> Again, what would like to, would you like to see from Jones is he's attacking the middle every time. He has this step on he has a step on Matt Barreto. And again, it's gonna be hard for if they can't contain that middle drive, it is just gonna open up the floor that much more for the Fullerton squad. Grayson Carper emerges here from the bench for the Titans. Grayson Carper is known as the parlay killer because last week he had a late three against San Diego State that made it a 24-point game instead of the 25-point game that people would need to win. The, their bets. And so uh, he, he is the parlay killer in my mind. Here's Garrison Wade. He has had a great first two games in a tight uniform. They are calling this game so soft. That is that is a tough call right there as Garrison Wade utilizing his upper body gets called for an offensive foul. I mean, this Fullerton squad is in the weight room. That's all I have to say about but that. But is it a good thing if you're going to get called for offensive fouls? Maybe it's a good thing to, to skip arm day, maybe. <laughs> According to these refs. <laughs> well, I guess I give credit to the footwork from uh, Ayo Falafi. Yeah, Ayo Falafi stepping in. He's really the size meter from the bench, a 6'8", 210-pound redshirt sophomore out of Lebanon, Pennsylvania. He played a couple of games at Rhode Island. And interesting fact, he did choose number zero because he had zero's offer, zero offers his senior year of yeah, high school. He so. is making a statement. He's trying to prove some doubters wrong, Carolyn. Right, right. Maybe he'll try to prove us wrong the rest of these, the rest <laughs> of these games. 19-18, Vermont leads by one. 
trickling along here to nine minutes to go in the first half. Here's Finn Sullivan back in Southern California where he was a star at Torrey Pines High School. Leaves the floater short. Emphatic rebound by Garrison Wade. Titans searching for the lead back. Right so down the lane, meets a wall of body, still puts it up, it's short. Matt Verretto squares it down. Delaware transfer, Matt Verretto. In possession up top. Finds Cam Gibson. And the ball swinging along the perimeter now. Sullivan penetrating. Sullivan shaking and baking. Can't hit. Rebound falls to Max Jones. They need to find a way to get Max Jones going. Probably the best pure shooter on this team, but just hasn't gotten a clean look yet today. Harris draws a double team. And Vermont's defense right now, talk about filling the gaps, is there's the three from the corner. Right on cue, Max Jones, a dead eye for the three. Definitely think he heard you there. <laughs> Definitely think he heard you there. A much needed three for one of the more prolific scorers in Division II a season ago, 21-19. Titans lead by one, by two rather. TJ Hurley, the freshman out of Pelham, Ontario, swings it out. And how about the answer by Matt Verretto? Just a right back at your shot, but you got to like the ball movement from the Catamounts right now. Just driving baseline and find that open shooter on the wing. This is Matt Verretto's first season since 2018-2019. He took a couple years off, transferred from Delaware to UConn where he got his degree, and now here he is back in action three years later for Vermont. How about Jalen Harris getting stuffed by Finn Sullivan? Sullivan leading the charge, goes to Gibson. Gibson thought about the three, gets right so long the skates, and the double comes. Reset back out, Ayo Felei. Can't get the floater. Rebound falls to Garrison Wade again. Vermont leads by one. Titans in possession. And right now it feels like the tempo is swinging towards the Catamounts. And an off ball foul on TJ Hurley. The freshman will take us to a media timeout. 22-21. The Catamounts lead the Titans. Back for more on... 22-21, the Catamounts lead the Titans back inside Titan Gymnasium. Beautiful campus of Cal State Fullerton. So happy you could join us. Carolyn Gill, Jonathan Rifkind. Catamounts lead by one after a quick spurt. The Titans looking to respond. Here's Latrell right to a lot of the timeout. Swings to the Nathaniel Bastion. Can't hit, but he does get fouled. And Bastion will head to the line. Another Division II transfer. He went to Angelo State down in Texas where he wreaked havoc in the Lone Star Conference. Nick Fiorillo called with the foul, his second. You see that reach in there. You've got to keep hands, both hands straight up. You can't reach in like that or keep the hand down. But as like you said, Bastion, he is uh, representing well for his family. Born in Nassau, Bahamas. Played on the islands in his prep days before making his way to the Lone Star State. Had a career-high 23 points against Western New Mexico. He actually had a 16-rebound game against West Texas A&M. If you're privy to Division II basketball, you'll know that's a very tough school to get high stats against. And Bastion was so good. Coach Taylor caught wind of him and recognized his defensive prowess and his energy would be beneficial for a team that was rebuilding. And goes 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Here's Finn Sullivan. Father Michael played basketball at Ball State. Brother Merrick played at USD. Cam Gibson turns the corner. Into the corner for three. It's Sullivan. It's off the back iron. Off the fingertips of Verretto. Tracked down by Jalen Harris. Harris still held scoreless. This is the Vermont game plan right now. Trying to take him out of the ball game. They got Vincent Lee out with two early fouls. Here's Bastion. He lost it. And a quick foul is called again on Matt Verretto. And that is the sixth Vermont team foul. No more fouls to give. By the way, this is not the only Titan basketball team to have played today, Carolyn. No, not at all. Our women's team, Titans women's basketball, was able to secure a win on the road against San Jose State. So super proud of you ladies. They were able to beat San Jose 71 to 63 and had four players in double figures. So again, big kudos to them. Let's see if our men's team can do that as Bastian gets an and one. 
and that's much deserved. I mean, he came in aggressive, draw those fouls, and I'm hoping to see that he can put these free throws in. But again, just being aggressive, going to the rim is going to allow him to be successful and hopefully be a momentum changer for this Titan squad. That was a good call. You should do play by play the rest of the game, Carolyn. <laughs> that was really good. No, we're having too much fun. I that was way that better was... than anything I was going to do. <laughs> Bastion does hit the end one, though, as perfectly called by Carolyn Gill. A alumnus of Fullerton women's basketball, as you could probably tell by her emphatic enthusiasm for the win against the Spartans of San Jose State. Bastion can hit the end one. He's 0 for 3 from the free throw line, and for a physical guy, he will be at the line a ton, right. and teams will be so okay sending him there if he has proven that he can't hit free throws consistently. Again, it is still early in the season, but you cannot be that player that the team looks to foul when it's that last minute situation. You gotta secure that early, but like you said, he's gonna be in a position where you can't leave these free points on the floor like that. I owe Falei in possession. 23-22. Titans lead by one. It's been a back and forth affair here with six more minutes to go into the corner. A little hot potato between the two. Falei tries a three. He gets it to fall. That is his first field goal of the 2022-23 campaign. The redshirt sophomore to transfer for Rhode Island. And you see Jones almost having to guard two people at once on that last play. So Titans, I know they're in that zone, but we got to have a little more communication to know who's guarding who. I mean, they were daring him to shoot. And right there, you saw Finn Sullivan take down Jalen Harris and Harris actually I believe went into his right leg and Sullivan will hit the deck that is that is not a good sign kind of went down there. a lot of fouls for the first half this is the second of the West Coast trip for the Catamounts they opened up against St. Mary's they opened up the season at home against Brown University taking down the Bears 80 to 65 Harris is, wow, that is a rare miss. He airballed the free throw, an 80% free throw shooter, Jalen Harris. And, you know, sometimes you can just be having one of those nights. I mean, like you said, we haven't really seen him be as productive, produce as much on the offensive end for the Titans. But, again, sometimes there's, definitely, there's so many more ways you can contribute. So let's see if he, his response, if he can bounce back on the defensive end. Into the corner, Gibson tries a three, had one earlier. And everybody's sweating on that one as Max Jones will track it down. Here's Torrey San Antonio, high post. An opportunity for Bastion. Great defense, but a foul is called. Dylan Penn looked like he got a clean hand on the rubber. You can't just reach in like that, though, too. But again, as the offensive player, Bastion has to have a court awareness of where the defenders are. You can't keep the ball that far out. You know, that's what we call a wolf in basketball, right? Mm -hmm. But that, that is up to the the rest of his teammates to point that out and, you know, maybe howl like a wolf, give him some indication <laughs> that there's a secondary defender coming around his back. If I was on defense, I loved when a big was just sitting there like that. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. Yeah, you, you you swiped away a few few big big women last year in the Big West. Just a few. Just a few. Just a few. Love the team in steals. <laughs> 0 for 4 from the free throw line, by the way, is Nathaniel Bastion. Something to keep in mind. It's a box in one zone defense. Bastion will foul Dylan Penn on his way to the rack. He hits it. An opportunity for Dylan Penn to get the and one. He actually played AU basketball with Robin Duncan, so they reunite. Oh, Dun you got to love that. I miss my old AU teammates. You really, really? got to love that. You ever play against them when you were playing? I have actually at UC San Diego. I got to play against an old teammate um, at San Diego State uh, with Najee Murray. Um, oh, she was good. Yeah, and she also got the transfer and went to go play at Syracuse, I yep. believe. So that was always fun. Yep. Well, Robin and Robin Duncan and Dylan Penn teaming up for the Catamounts. The and one is good. It's 28-23. Vermont leads by five. Wrightsville tries a corner three. No good. Rebound tracked down by Duncan to Penn. Max Jones trying to stave off a potential paint penetration. Great pass down low in the jam by Io Falei. Largest lead of the ball game. It's up to seven for Vermont. Falei is giving people reasons why uh, they should have gave him that offer during his high school <laughs> run. For three, it's Jalen Harris. There's one. Trying to get him going, his first points of the ball game, and it cuts into the deficit. See, he was saving it from the team he needed the most. That's what it was. He was what, saving it. Wouldn't they prefer, though, if he didn't get into that position at all? Yeah, no, <laughs> for sure. Here's Penn putting it to the deck. Right at right till he goes. Swings it back out to Loney. He's been quiet, and he is... 
stuffed at the rim, but ball trickles off the foot of Lathaniel Bastion, and that will take us to our final media timeout. Vermont leads by four. They'll be in possession under their own hoop. He's making a statement tonight. Not even just solid dunk, but you saw the tight defense just all get sucked with the driver, so he was just wide open in the paint. Great finish right there. Leary Iofalei, another one of those highly touted big men off the bench for Coach Becker, getting it done on the offensive end out of the timeout. Penn can't hit the floater, and how about Jalen Harris, the smallest man out there, swerving his way to the rebound. I'm really glad the Titans are able to secure that rebound. They have to keep the Catamounts to one shot. And a whistle is drawn off the ball. Cam Gibson, the second time he is called with an off-ball foul. It was a handoff from Harris to Garrison Wade, and there was some contact down low between Gibson and Nathaniel Bastion. Now, if you're in Vermont, Bastion's 0 for 4 from the free throw line right now. You're okay with this result. Right. If I'm Coach Becker, I'm, I'm, a, I'm mad. I'm a little mad, but I would be even more mad if Bastion had made all four free throws beforehand into tie game. Let's give us one there, and there's the one we need just to get it started for the Titans. Well, not started. Antonio was able to have one of those free throws, but just to get it started for uh, his record, it's nice to see one go in. Had two steals in the opener at San Diego State. That was his first ever Division I game. Played five minutes against Pepperdine, contributed two points. He's two for two that time, two for six on the game. It's a two-point ball game as we have the three-and-a-half-minute mark here of the first half. Dylan Penn operating above the perimeter. Great double team to force him to a tough spot. The force feed to Iofalei. And they swing it out to Robin Duncan. We have not seen Finn Sullivan check back in. He is still on the bench. We'll keep you posted on him. In the corner, ball tipped away. Great defense by Jalen Harris to close the gap. I like to see that. The uh, chop on the feet, quick feet movement. That's what's going to be important. Stay on your toes. You cannot be flat footed on defense. So uh, being able to not only use your peripheral to see man and ball, being on your toes, that's A1 defense right there. Io Flay takes the inbound. Five seconds on the shot clock. A little eight foot fader is no good. Dunk to try to put it back in. Missed everything. Here comes Max Jones. Titans looking for the tie or the lead. Torrey San Antonio has a game high 10 points. Harris puts it down. He has three. Back out San Antonio. And a good reset by the Catamount defense. Free throw line, San Antonio flips it up, gets fouled. He'll go to the line for two. And that might be the third foul on Cam Gibson. It could go against Io Filei, but... What you see here, I like the hesitation from Antonio standing up the defense and being able to just draw that contact. Again, you see him hesitate. And then going head on in. And you're okay missing that layup, right? You're, you're anticipating contact being made. The, the right. point is to get to the free throw line. Especially if I'm already one for one. I want to get to the free throw line and get my free points, give my teammates a break. Let's free a little bit, guys. Tie the ball game down. up. Exactly. Settle down so we can play some amazing defense on the next possession. The earliest shooting guard in the nation back in this prep days, Torrey San Antonio. He had a hurt ankle last year against Cal State Bakersfield that sidelined him for a few games, but. His defense was an integral part of the tournament run that saw Cal State Fullerton take down Long Beach State in the championship. Hits both, we're tied at 30. It's a 7 0 Titan run here at the 245 mark of half number one. Penn penetrates down the baseline, kicks it back out. This is TJ Hurley. Lost real estate, ball swung, Aaron Deloney to the deck. Hurley in the corner, foul is called prior to the shot. Nathaniel Bastion will be charged with one, and it's a one-on-one -on -one situation now for the Catamounts. John Becker relaying some information on his team. By the way, Carolyn, you have to be careful because John Becker could be coming for your job. <laughs> From 2000 until 2003, he was actually a Division Three color commentator on NCAA broadcasts. See, that just so you better be, you better be on your A game the rest of this game because I guarantee you when Becker's done coaching, he's probably going to go back into the broadcasting game. Would not be surprised. I mean, so much knowledge, so much just being around ba different basketball. Man. He is the only mid-major coach in the country since 2011 to post nine straight 20-plus win seasons. I mean, this has been a powerhouse out of Burlington. They've made the postseason in five of the last six years and they're primed to do it again 31 to 30 our score bastion sheds the defense and has an easy lay-in flexing that muscle and that's why you hit the weight room that's exactly why you hit the weight room and i like to see
just to focus now on this defensive end. And what you're going to want from this Titan squad, stop, score, stop. Stop, score, stop. That's the formula you're going to need as you finish out this half. Taloni back out. Ayofalei with a career high in minutes played so far, continuing on here. Penn tees up a corner triple. It drops. It's 34-32. Wide open is Sean Penn, and he can make you pay. Does not need any space, and that was way too much space given by Wade. Nearing a minute and a half left here in half number one. 34-32, Vermont leads by two. It's been, for the most part, a back and forth affair. The largest lead has been the Catamounts by seven. Harris got hit, no call. Shot is long, Penn with the board. Duncan to Penn. And this time, Garrison Wade doesn't want to give him an inch. Back out to Duncan. Swung to Deloney. And a good job by Jalen Harris to deny the give and go. Ball into the corner. It's a three. It's short. That was TJ Hurley on the attempt. Coming back the other way of the Titans. 60 seconds to play. Harris into the corner. San Antonio looking for his fourth triple. He oh. got it. Oh. You like that one, huh, Carolyn? I did. <laughs> I did. That's the bread and butter spot right there. Tori San Antonio has a save off. The, the late first half spurt by Cal State Fullerton in the final 58. What you're seeing from Fullerton is a lot of points in the paint. Vermont is going to want to be able to stay in this game. They need to stop the driving angles from Fullerton. And yes, Quatoria's had a great shooting night, but they've gotten to Bastion and he's able to been, he's been able to be effective. Ball on the movement. offensive end, yeah, great ball movement like, yep. like you were about to say. Loretta with land. Great ball movement by the Catamounts there. And you're going to want to not... If you're in a zone, moving the ball as quick as possible is going to make the zone tire, and you'll catch somebody slipping. San Antonio wants a two for one, dumps it down low to Bastion. There's about a 12-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. You don't get the two for one, but you get a quality shot at that. Lathaniel Bastion coming alive here in half number one, 37-36. Titans lead by one. Vermont in possession of the basketball and an opportunity to get out of here with a lead, but first a timeout called by Robin Duncan. They had one to spare here in the half. And we're going to check out Lathaniel Bastion. This was just great play. I mean, hot right now for Vermont. What I'd like to see is just the, the way they've been able to attack. And when they do drive and kick, that's when they've been successful. Dylan Penn has been the hot shooter for Vermont so far here in half number one. We'll see if they go to him. But they have a myriad of scores. They have not been able to get Aaron Deloney, the pure scorer on this team, going. Here he is in possession with 13 seconds left in half number one. Lathaniel Bastion will match up to him. Deloney able to shed it, gets a good look, no good. Rebound ripped down by Wade, an opportunity for the Titans. San Antonio wants a half quarter, it's off left. Maybe an opportunity to take one more dribble. Gotta love the effort though from Torrey San Antonio. That's his first missed three, by the way. <laughs> and it comes at the half court shot to end the first half. But what a first half. In that zone, you have to move on the flight of the ball. And as you can see here, uh, right next oh, to Oh, this me. is my favorite part. <laughs> Check out this link, you guys. We're going to show you how it's done. So I'm about to go buy tickets yep. for every Fullerton Athletic event. Go ahead and uh, scan that QR code and get your tickets because this is going to be a great season for this Titan squad. Men's basketball back at home on November 22nd against NAIA Westcliff. Second half underway as we get going. Vermont in possession. There's Dylan Penn. He flips it up and in. And Vermont will regain the lead in the opening moments of half number two. Dylan Penn is out there. I do see Finn Sullivan. That is a very good sign, number 15. He went down after colliding with Jalen Harris on his right knee. And he is out there guarding Harris once again. He is joined with Nick Ferrarillo as a foul is called down low. Robin Duncan will round out the order for Coach John Becker. Jalen Harris is out there. Vincent Lee, Tori San Antonio, Max Jones, and Latrell Reitzel for Diedrich Taylor. Vincent Lee. Played the first four minutes of the half. He picked up two quick fouls, was benched thereafter, but Nathaniel Bastion, Garrison Wade, stepped into his place quite nicely. Here he is, backing down Filarillo, draws a double into the corner. San Antonio thought about the three good close up by Aaron Deloney. San Antonio still with a turnaround 12-footer, no good. And that was a good patient shot right there, not to settle for the three. You want to get a little bit warm before you start chucking up threes like that. Dylan Penn, who opened out the gates with a two, can hit the floater. And now an opportunity for the Titans coming the other way with it. In the corner, it's Jalen Harris. It's a three. It's off the back iron and a rebound by the retro junior of Scarborough, Maine. Nick Ferrillo. Mr. Maine basketball semifinalists his senior year. 
I'm sure that is a very tight list up in Maine. <laughs> Here's Finn Sullivan, the San Diego native, dumping it down low. Fiorello turns, shoots, can't get the flipper to go. Patrell writes with another rebound. You like to see Fullerton getting these stops, but what I'm hoping to see is just a turning over, and uh, they got to score on this offensive end. And a turnover by Harris. Yeah. They get that ball up a bit higher. Good anticipation by Fiorello down low. Here's Deloney. He gets stripped from behind by San Antonio, gets it back. Sullivan tees up a triple, gets it to fall. And that's just good ball movement by the Catamounts, just not giving up on the play. Obviously, when you, with that tip, you could have just given up, but they swung that rock around the rock around the paint and was able to find the open shooter. At 16 points, a San Diego career high against number one Gonzaga, Finn Sullivan. He is no stranger to, to big games. And an offensive foul drawn by Robin Duncan. That is the third Titan offensive foul here in the ball game. And that's going to quick throw line. I'm just saying, as a senior leader, you know you've had games like this in the past. This is not something that is new to you. So being able to just bounce back and have that what's next mentality, next play mentality is going to be really important. So it'll be two free throws on the ball here. Robin Duncan can't hit the first. See, I can't be too mad. He didn't, he didn't make the free throw. So. Well, <laughs> still got another one, one. Yeah, I know. There's one more. But he, no matter what, I mean, you're you're basically seeding an entire possession as he does at the second because the Titans have the ball. Now they don't have the ball. Now the momentum is back with Vermont right. and possession. So it cancels out an entire play and gives them a free point. And that is definitely not what you want if you're the Titans who are now trailing by five. 6-0 run here to open up the half for the University of Vermont. The Catamounts, as they're known as. The Catamount is a mountain lion that used to be a native of Vermont. Mm -hmm. And then it went extinct. So for all intents and purposes, the University of Vermont are the only Catamounts left. Wow. Wow. And a turnover taken away by Deshaun Eaton. Bringing it the other way. Eaton strides. He's rejected down low by Nick Fiorillo. Great job by Fiorillo to stick with him. Able to time that block there. And steps. Pen, yeah, Penn puts it to the deck, flips, flips it down low. And that is the AAU connection that we've been talking about. <laughs> Dylan Penn to Robin Duncan, and the lead balloons back up. And that's a great find. And on the tight end, the defensive end, if you're on that bottom that bottom part, that bottom left side on the zone, you've got to get inside of the offensive player. You can't be standing outside and allowing them to cut way too much space. Vincent Lee on the shoulder. Puts it to the deck, and that is a foul. I've been saying they called it a bit soft in the first half. I would say that might have been another soft call against Nick Ferrarillo. Yeah, they're calling it pretty close, and don't want to assume it's a makeup call or anything for whatever reason, but again, Lee is just, uh, he's in the weight room. He's, I guess he's uh, earned his fouls. <laughs> Talk about weight room. Garrison Wade, who might be the strongest player on this team, is back out there. <laughs> Deshaun Eaton will take a seat. The Gunners right so Titans scoreless here in the opening three minutes and some change. San Antonio the lead. Double comes, Lee turns, offensive foul is called. Vincent Lee pleading his case. I guess they're saying he wrapped around, and you got to be careful if you're Vincent Lee. The last thing you need is to pick up a technical foul. That is his third foul of the ball game and the second offensive foul he's been called for. Right, and uh, again, because the rest are calling it so tight, you got to make sure that you're just on your ten toes. It, the truth is, as frustrating as these calls can be, it's been consistent. The, yeah. It was established early on that this is how this game was going to be called, and the referees, to their credit, have been consistent mm -hmm. with these calls. Aaron Deloney on the right shoulder. Here's Perry Smith Jr., the freshman, into the corner. Duncan tries a three. No good. Perry Smith Jr. out of Augusta, Georgia. More on him in a moment. Played in 13 minutes against St. Mary's last game. Here's Max Jones, still without a field goal. San Antonio powering his way. Foul is called prior to the shot. It'll be side out here, but Torrey San Antonio continuing to try and inflict his will on the Catamount defense. And that's a great strong move. Again, you see him attacking middle. That's going to be just pertinent to making sure that you're able to, to at least find a good shot. And it just takes a quick jab and just be able to get into that paint area. It's a wrap, but... Uh, don't know if it was just an early call. He can't have a continuation. Uh, yeah, I think play. that they called it right before yeah. that third step. So Robin Duncan gets tallied with it. He'll take a seat. 
Back out is TJ Hurley for the Catamounts. In the corner, San Antonio, he has four of those. Ball finds Jones, extra pass to Luttrell. On the deck he goes, an eight-foot floater, no good. Rebound is fought for. A little bit of friendly fire between Max Jones and Nathaniel Bastion, and those are the frustrating miscues that DJ Taylor does not want to see from his squad. Right, although you like the fact that your players were there, that's just a rebound that one of them just has to come up with. Seven point lead matching the largest of the ball game. Vermont was up 27 to 20 at one point. Here's Sullivan into the middle. Deloney now calling out a play. He's asking for a screen. And that, right now, Vermont's offense seems out of sorts. They're going to get going with 12 seconds on the shot clock. Sullivan into the corner. For three, it's Penn. It drops. Titans defense falling asleep right there. Lead balloons to 10. You cannot leave him open like that. I know you're in the help side. But that's just way too much time for him to get that shot off. Deloney almost picking the pocket of Reitzel. Trell penetrating back out. Torrey looking to answer. No good. In and out the ball rolls. Perry Smith Jr. with the board. Dylan Penn coming the other way. He has been so good this game, but a foul is called. And we hit our first media timeout. A 10-0 Vermont run to open up half number two. They lead 47 to 37. Can the Titans string together a couple of these two fantastic programs? Carolyn Gill, Jonathan Rifkin. On behalf of our entire ESPN Plus crew, we certainly appreciate you making us a part of what is now your Sunday evening plans. Daylight savings time in full swing here. And I think the Titans might be feeling some effects as they have had some lethargy coming out of halftime. Yeah, Dylan Penn has just been a force for the Catamounts and just extremely effective. In the corner, a three by Hurley as Shorty's 0 for 2. Reitzel rips down the rebound. Latrell Reitzel 1 for 6 right now on the offensive side of thing. Picks up his fourth rebound. Swung to Max Jones. He needs to get going. He can't get it off the back iron. Rebound tracked down by Robin Duncan. And Finn Sullivan will slow it up. Check that. That was Sullivan. Duncan's on the bench with third foul. Deloney, okay, slowing up the pace right now. The Titans have gotten cold. Here in half number two, and Vermont has certainly taken advantage. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Sullivan operating on the left wing. Nice feed down low to Penn. Can't get the roll. Wanted a foul. No call. Reitzel with another. Here comes Latrell searching for points. Looking to go end to end into the corner. It's Jones. Good closeout by Finn Sullivan, the defensive stopper. Extra pass. San Antonio. On the deck he goes, penetrating the middle, swings it out with 13 on the clock, it's Jones. Jones with 11, good lay-in off the glass by Max Jones. Boy, do they need to get that guy going. Lead is cut down to eight. I like how the Titans were making it a point to get to the rim and not set up for those three-point shots. You can see Antonio had a chance, he did. I think he realizes that he's gonna wanna warm up a bit and get some shots in the paint. Vincent Lee is out with three fouls. That's Garrison Wade guarding Dylan Penn. In the quarter, Manuel, or Hurley rather, thought about it. Flips it up too hard, no good, he's 0 for 3. Here come the Titans, an opportunity. A little bit of momentum right now to try and cut into this deficit. Reitzel into the middle, floater is short. They are missing a lot of 8-footers right now. I mean, the floater is in his back, he can get a little bit more on that one. We've seen a few of them be left short. Looks like Cam Gibson will check in at the next break for the Catamounts. Deloney into the corner. Hurley thought about it, hands it back. Perry Jr. draws a double. Good close out by Wade to force the give up. Sullivan with five. Out for three. It's Penn. No good. Contact made. And a flop warning now on Dylan Penn. So we were questioning on the flagrant by Jalen Harris if we would see a flop warning that time. That is a good call. It was tough to see, but if you look right before the shot leaves, he tries to sell it. Not a lot of contact, and he... He's already fallen back. Yeah. He tries to let gravity do its thing and try to sell it as a foul. And in that right corner, you're thinking Bastian is walking into him, but... He's standing his ground. Yep. You you can stand your ground first, but there is a rule, of course, you have to let the shooter land. Now, you got to take into account where if a shooter normally jumps forward on their shot, that's just their shot. So you got to give them that room to land. So then again, it's not technically a flop, but yeah, they're, the call's going to be a, it's going to be that flop call. You need these free throws and a nice 
Wrightsell hits the first one that's needed by this Fullerton squad who has only had their first three points. They're finally scoring. In the last minute or two is when they've finally been able to get past that 37 mark. Yeah, Max Jones with a layup. Latrell Wrightsell hitting the technical foul on the flop warning. Wrightsell, the junior out of Omaha, Nebraska. His father, Latrell Sr., played at Creighton. Here's Jalen Harris. Great defense to force him to give it up. How about Garrison Wade for three? He cans it. Not privy to corner triples, but boy, do they need that one from the Dartmouth transfer. 100%. Now with Titans only down four, this is a great momentum as they uh, finish out these 12 minutes of the half. A welcome surprise and a momentum booster. Here he is matching up with Dylan Penn. And zone defense in full effect right now for the Titans. Oh, that is a, ch wow, they wow. call it a foul on that. Oh, I was about to wow. say it was a travel or a jump. Right. And when you talk about weight room, I mean. He didn't even Del budge. No, Deloney hit a brick wall. <laughs> and the brick wall was called for a foul. That is tough. Vincent Lee will check back in for Lathaniel Bastion. I mean, it was Deloney who enforced the contact. I think the only reason you call that is because Bastion isn't set. Now, if he's set and he's not still moving his feet, then that's when it's you're able to get that charge call, or it's just, if he doesn't move, it's just no call. But you got to have your feet set if you're going to get that type of contact. But again, I just, uh, I like the defense. I like the bigs that can move their feet, so. Playing tough, you'll take that foul if you're Coach Taylor. 47-43, mm -hmm. the deficit is back down to four. In possession, though, is TJ Hurley, the freshman out of Pelham, Ontario. Area. Now Deloney, he's a senior from Grant High School up in Portland, Oregon, and Torrey San Antonio. Yeah, he threw his arms up, but you knew that was a foul. I knew it was coming. Yeah. The way he was a bit handsy from the jump, you can just, I don't know if it's just the defense in me, but I just kind of have that that uh, progression where, like, I'm in there, I'm in there, I'm there, I'm there. Foul. And you kind of get a little too excited. <laughs> fouls abundant here in the opening eight minutes of half number two. That is four team fouls on Vermont and five for the Titans. Here's Perry Smith Jr., the freshman from Georgia. Resetting things to Gibson. Operating with 13 seconds on the shot clock. Gibson turns into the corner. Dylan Penn thought about it. Gets San Antonio up. Extra pass down low. A block by Lee, but a foul is called. They're going to get Garrison Wade, who may, may have made some contact on the elbow. Yeah. Right. And you're, you're hoping it wasn't on Lee because he just checked right back in. Yeah, so, he's uh, Wade prior to the timeout. Opportunity here for Perry Smith Jr. to get on the scoring blocks. He was an ESPN three-star recruit last year. Top five recruit out of South Carolina where he went to Legacy Early College, a prep school. He was there in 2019 and 2020. He actually won the USA National Prep Championships, which is a very tough task. Goes 0 for 2. How about uh, Duncan with the offensive rebound? Deloney will try a 3. Can't get it. Hits the deck. Torrey San Antonio begging for a flop warning. No call. And that is the third offensive rebound on the strip for the Catamounts. This is a big possession right now for both teams. Gibson into the corner for three. Verretto got it. Second three for Matt Verretto and the lead back up to seven. And that's going to add to the count of second chance points. Vermont was only at two and now it's up to five second chance points. The Titans need to make sure that they clean it up and uh, grab some defensive rebounds. Jones searching for Wade into the corner. San Antonio. He has four threes so far. He has 15 points, three shy of his career high. Lee draws a double. You got to get rid of it. Vincent Lee. There it is. San Antonio. Extra pass. Jones finds Wade. Has one three. Give him two. Garrison Wade. Dead eye from the corner. What did DJ Khaled say? Another one. Another one. Oh, I thought he said DJ Khaled. <laughs> well, after that. <laughs> We the best music. Anyways, <laughs> here's Robin Duncan. <laughs> Cam Gibson draws the San Antonio defense. Great defense by Torrey to force him to pick it up. I like the dig two by Harris just to make sure he picked it up as well. And a nice rebound by Jones. Yeah, Deloney's been ice cold. Good play by play by Carolyn Gill. <laughs> Jones steps in for a 17-footer, leaves it short. Deloney bouncing off of Verretto, tracks down the board. I know he's open for that shot, but I would like to see the Titans take their time a bit more. And a nice offensive charge called. 
going you, against the Catamounts. You okay, Carolyn Gill? I am. I'm a little excited. <laughs> a little excited. It's like a flash for me right there. I remember getting some charges. Yeah, right on that, right on that block yeah. right there. Good job by and Tori San Antonio. Feet there. I mean, you, the way you move your feet, if you're just there and you beat the offensive player there, you can't be mad at the call if you're the, the Catamounts. This is great defense right there. Yeah, Robin Duncan frustrated, but we've seen that all game long. They're keeping it consistent. This time it just doesn't go the Catamounts' way. Opportunity to cut it to one possession for Cal State Fullerton. They have remained resilient here. They trailed by 10 at the 15-minute mark. Max Jones gets bodied from behind by Finn Sullivan, and that is the sixth team foul for Vermont. Both teams with no fouls to give. And I'm not gonna lie, so not I can't say lucky, but it looks like Max Jones just had to step. He was going up with the layup there. That could have been an easy two if he uh, doesn't get tripped up. Sullivan will take a seat back in Dylan Penn. Jalen Harris, the gunner under the hoop. And maybe a good foul by Finn Sullivan because that could have been an easy two. Lee on the inbound. Max Jones turning the corner. Max Jones playing big. Can't get the layup, though. Great defense by Nick Fiorillo. And a steal by Lee. He jams it down. It's a two-point ball game. And that's the momentum you see. Excuse my. That's the momentum you just see from the Fullerton squad. A little trip up at half court. Was it a trip of celebration? I have never seen that before where three Fullerton Titans had a bit of a traffic jam out there at midcourt. For three, Verretto can't get it. And Garrison Wade draws a foul. Right. Yeah, Robin Duncan a little too handsy. I believe he was out of bounds on our last play call. Oh, right. It good too. call. Good call. So that'll be the call. But again, this is full court defense, right? This is a team that has been really struggling in stopping teams in full court pressure situations. And Max Jones, who missed a wide open layup, he made it up with his defense. He had two steals last week against San Diego State, which is no easy task. And it turns into a Vincent Lee dunk and a ton of momentum now for the Titans. An opportunity to tie or take the lead. Here's Jones. Harris. Nice feed to Lee up high. Can't hit it. He does get fouled, and he will go to the line. Vincent Lee playing real big right now. Great find by Jalen Harris. Great find. And again, you want to see that attack, drawing the defense to you. And he, I know he wanted that shot to go in. I know he did, but it's been a long game for him. So love to see that kind of play he's able to get. Great setup there. Vincent Lee, a 74% career free throw shooter. On the wrong end of the first try. Started his career at the University of Nevada. He didn't play. He enrolled but transferred to Fullerton. He had offers from Texas A&M and Washington State. He goes 0 for 2. That was a great box out by Verretto. Torres San Antonio looked like he may have had an angle on the offensive rebound. Lead remains 2 for the Catamounts. Looking to extend here. Verretto to Penn on the high post. Penn taking it at Jones. Turns the corner. Flips it up and in for 2. And Dylan Penn tried to get up. And he is hobbling right now. His left ankle may have been twisted on that play. Contact made and a blocking foul is called. Oh man, this is becoming sloppy. Nick Ferrarillo can't believe it. And boy, I hope Dylan Penn's okay. He came up after initially hitting the ground on the layup, then went back down and then got back up and was limping. You see him wearing the highlighter green shoes off to the side. And I think he'll check out here for Perry Smith Jr. And they got to get the subs in before the free throw. That's and actually, the, they're going to keep Penn out there. They're going to sit Nick Ferrarillo. Maybe he has enough adrenaline in there. To, uh, he's a tough. I mean, the way that he plays, I mean, that dude is tough. He's relentless. Just driving to the rim. And he's a, just a great finisher around the basket. So you're going to want to keep him in for these uh, last eight minutes. Max Jones able to hit. And he gets another. I don't think that either team realized it. He had a 39-point game last year against Florida Tech. He had a 38-point game against the 17th-ranked Division II Barry University. You know who has a degree from Barry University? Who? Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> it's an honorary degree. He actually has an honorary doctorate from Barry, from Barry University. Very nice. So whenever you hear Dr. Shaq, you can blame Barry University. Anyways, Max Jones goes two for two. It's 52-50. to 50. <laughs> A very informative broadcast. 
Here's Dylan Penn in the corner. 15 on the clock. Crosses up Wade, but Wade gets him back with the SWAT. Tracked down by Penn, 10 on the clock for three. It's Gibson, no good. And a great offensive rebound by Matt Barreto. They have been really stymied, the Titans, in their rebounding game. And Wade could have gave up on that last play, but uh, time to perfectly to get the block. And an offensive mm -hmm. charge. What, against the Catamounts. One official called it a block, one official called it a charge, and they deferred to the charging call. It was the baseline official who had a better angle on it, and a great job by Max Jones to step in. That is a great call. You see the official on the near side calling the, yeah. the block, but. And what I love too, the hustle from Jones to get his feet outside that paint, excuse me, outside the, uh, the charge. The restricted arc. The restricted arc, yes. Just to make sure that he did not get that blocking foul. Because if you have just your heels on that line, it's a block. 52 to 50. The Titans have trailed every moment of half number two. They trailed by as many as 10. Max Jones, who had a possession saving charge a moment ago, goes to Lee back out to Harris with 10. Harris draws the double. Somebody's open. It's Garrison Wade in the corner. Jones puts it to the deck. Ah. And an offensive foul. You could see him lifting his arm. And actually. Block. I think we are going to have a blocking foul. So it will be a one and one situation, 18th, and then they're back home at the end of the week against Westcliff and an NIA foe, and then the North Dakota tournament. They'll take on the newly minted Utah Tech team mm. before they head up to Seattle for the final game of that road trip. Here's Max Jones. He is a very good free throw shooter. He picked up a blocking foul in the previous drive, and he has an opportunity with one more free throw to tie this thing up. And the free throws have been a, uh, a thing the Titans have needed to pick up on. I mean, earlier in the first half, they left five, free, five, left five points on the floor. So it's nice to see a two for two from Jones. Yeah, clean it up. We're tied at 52. Seven and a half to go here in the ball game between the top team in the AEC and the team picked to finish seventh in the Big West. Robin Duncan being harassed, goes back out. Long three by Gibson, no good. Over the back. Robin Duncan cannot catch a break. That is back-to-back -back Vermont defense, uh, Vermont possessions, rather, where he has been called for fouls. And now free throws the rest of the way. Ten team fouls on Vermont. And he is fouling the wrong person. That'll bring Torrey San Antonio to the free throw line. And that's something that you're at least, although it wasn't a clean, clear box out, just a hustle and going to get that rebound. That's important for the Titans squad. You have to keep him to one shot. They've had too many second chance opportunities. And a rare miss from Torrey. Still sitting at 15 points. He's scoreless here in the second half. The Titans are now 8 for 14 from the line. While Vermont is sitting at 3 for 5. Now, the positive side of that is you've only allowed Vermont to take 5 free throws. But you have to take advantage on your own side. I mean, you only made one more free throw, but you've taken 9 more. Not a great stat if you're Coach Taylor. Nonetheless, Torrey San Antonio does hit the back end. And the Titans back in the lead by 1. A little full court pressure as Hurley will cede possession to Aaron Deloney. Deloney has really struggled in this ball game, coming in as a highly touted scorer. He had 32 points in his first ever start against Brown in the corner. Hurley uncorks one and gets it to fall. He was 0 for 3 prior, and Vermont back in the lead by two. And that's a player you want to make play off the dribble, so to leave him open like that, can't do that the rest of the game for the Titans squad. Foul off the ball. They're going to get Perry Smith Jr. trying to battle down low for positioning with Vincent Lee, and that'll send Vincent Lee to the free throw line. Vincent Lee, by the way, so last week against San Diego State, he banged in two free throws. It looked like it was on purpose. When I asked Coach Taylor, he said it wasn't. I'm still going to say that I think they were on purpose because they were so perfectly banked as he <laughs> leaves one short. Maybe he should go back to banking them. See, that's going to be a thing where it's almost like luck just to bank it in. But if you're <laughs> aiming to bank it in because, like, none of my other shots are going, I got to hit the bank. And he's strong on that one. Yeah, and now 8 for 16, and the ball goes out of play. Aaron Deloney was the intended receiver on the pass by Perry Smith Jr. The pass goes through his hands out of play and an opportunity now in a huge break for the Titans. Here's Jalen Harris on the inbounds. Titans coming off a big West Conference championship in the tournament last year. 
lost to Duke as a 15 seed in the opener of the tournament. The Catamounts are also a tournament team. They've made the tournament in four of the last five years. And six of the last seven, they just have not been able to get a win since 2005. Here's San Antonio, no good. Vincent Lee tips. Ball is tracked down and maintained by Cam Gibson. Good job by him to stay with it. And San Antonio is once again held without a field goal here in half number two. Outside for three, Verretto, no good. Garrison Wade rips it down. He leads the charge, the three on two. Wade to Jones. Oh, he should have found San Antonio on the baseline. Instead, he swings it back out. Harris, that's going to be an offensive foul. No! Wow! It looked like Cam Gibson. This is why you don't call the play ahead of time, folks. This is broadcasting 101 right here. <clears throat> because... Now, to me, that looked like an offensive foul. What I saw, he's already falling back. Before you know what, you're went, right. He could even get contact, and that, that one of his feet, I can't remember if it's that left or right foot. Let's see it again. It looked like his left foot was still, yeah, his, yep, still sliding a little bit. His right foot, and yeah, his left foot was still sliding, so you weren't exactly set. But he could have even either been a flop call, too, because he's already falling back. back. Maybe he just doesn't have good balance. <laughs> Hey, Jalen Harris, a very good free throw shooter, gets the first one to fall, one more to tie. A much needed free throw by the Titans. And right now, John Becker's body language, a bit melancholic, if you will, on the Vermont sideline as he'll bring back in Io Falei, who was a really good piece in the first half off the bench for the Catamounts. Jalen Harris will calmly tee up the second one. We're tied at 55. And that'll bring Latrell Reitzel for the moment. 55 to 55. Six minutes to go here in the ball game. Vermont has led by as many as 10. Titans have led by as many as six. And this man right here has been the bulk of the offense for the Catamounts. Deloney calling out the play. They're trying to get Penn on a backdoor screen. There it is, but a good job to stay with him is Garrison Wade. Wade extending. Penn flips it to Io Falei. Nine on the clock. This is the guy you want outside, and now Deloney. Into the corner. Bredo gets stopped. Tries to shoot it with one. That was a tough shot with one on the shot clock. Garrison Wade had a ping-ponged around and taken by Latrell Reitzel. Opportunity for the Titans to take their first lead here in the second half. Wade to San Antonio. Latrell Reitzel all the way to the rack. He leaves it short, but a late whistle. And T.J. Hurley fouled him. That'll send Latrell Reitzel to the free throw line with an opportunity to give the Titans the lead. And he did come down hard on that play, but I think he knows and he feels that he should have made that one. It's a nice... It's a nice way he tried to scoop it up there. Just need a little more on it to get it to hit that backboard. And yeah, you see the right hip of Hurley just thrusting his way into a gliding Latrell Reitzel and forcing him to the deck. 56-55, Reitzel hits the first. Shows Cal State Fullerton over a myriad of really good mid-majors out there where he's from. Turned down North Texas, Bradley University, South Dakota State. Northern Illinois to come down here to Orange County and play for the Titans. Catamount searching for points. They trail by two. Here's Dylan Penn taking it upon himself, forced to give it up. Now Ayofalei. And a foul is called. They're going to get Vincent Lee a little too much aggression on the defensive side of things. And although I like the way that he tried to move his feet, you cannot give a middle like that. That's just, you're building him out, just giving him middle. Force him to that baseline. And make sure that uh, not only that, force me to where your defense or help defense is at too, since you have a man in the corner. Io Falei, since he had that jam early in the first half, has been largely quiet, but this could be huge if he could find a way to hit both these. Not a great free throw shooter, gets a friendly roll. Little backspin on it. That's a friendly touch right there. Got the, the home bounces in a way player. <laughs> Maybe plotting with the rim. Looking to tie it up. No good. Rebound taken by Lathaniel Bastion. The Titans have the ball and the lead. 
Vincent Lee checked out for Nathaniel Bastion. Bastion had a very good first half. Three for three from the field. One for, check that, two for six from the free throw line, though. Very good defender. In the corner, here's Garrison Wade. He had a three earlier in the ball game. decides to put it down to the deck. Turns, shoots, gets the ball to roll through the net. Great play by Garrison Wade. And the Titans corral a three-point lead. I like the patience on that shot. You saw he was looking for his team with tracks to see if he can make a pass. But in his patience of looking, he's able to turn around and set himself up for a nice shot right there. Penn taking it right out. Wade, it pops out. No home bounce for Dylan Penn. Garrison Wade with another rebound. And Wrights will, tie, will slow it up, I should say. Right now, the momentum firmly with Cal State Fullerton with 3.52 and counting to go in the ball game. Max Jones facilitates it. Latrell Reitzel back to Jones in the corner. Verretto closes out. Jones going at Verretto, got tripped up, regains his balance, turns, flips, no good. Bastion with the board. Garrison Wade all the way to the rack. He airballed it, wanted a foul, no call. And now coming the other way with it are the Catamounts. Looked like he wanted to go for the two hand jam. And Deloney hangs, hits, and won. How about the six foot, 165 pound Aaron Deloney taking at? I mean, yeah, those road games are the ones you're really going to want to try to secure. They, so, they won't, three those can put them on top right now. They won't be back home until December 1st when they take on Division Three Northern Vermont Linden. Deloney hits the and one. We are tied at 59. Right, so Wade. Harris back in with Vincent Lee and Torrey San Antonio, your five for the Titans. And the ball remains on the perimeter. Here's Reitzel. Great screen by Vincent Lee, frees him up, swings it back out. Now Garrison Wade into the corner. Reitzel for three. It's short. Deloney tracks down the rebound, and Latrell Reitzel will foul him from behind. This will be free throws. A one and one for a very good free throw shooter in Aaron Deloney. And I like the effort to try to crash the board, but that's just a foul you don't need right now. Third foul for Latrell Reitzel. Aaron Deloney, the Oregonian at a Grant High School. He departed his high school as the second all-time leading scorer in the school's history. He was the Oregon Gatorade Player of the Year. He was the AEC Sixth Man of the Year last year. He hits the front end of the one-and-one -one to give Vermont the lead. His season high last year was 24 points that came against Engit. Career 75% free throw shooter. Gets both. Now the Titans with their backs against the wall. Three minutes ago, trailing by two. Still plenty of basketball left, but again, you'd rather be up right now. It's been a game of ebbs and flows. Both teams trading punches and leads here late. Harris all the way, hangs, can't hit. He gets fouled, and Finn Sullivan again hitting the ground. He has been shaken up quite a few times this game, and they're trying to help him up. He does not want to get up. Maybe expressing a little bit of frustration after the foul, but a good job by Jalen Harris to maintain poise inside. And Finn Sullivan picking up foul number. Is that his fifth? It is. So Finn Sullivan, the best defender for Vermont, and an offensive threat in his return to Southern California where he made a name at Torrey Pines High School in San Diego, is fouled out of the game. Jalen Harris with an opportunity to tie things up. Jalen Harris with an opportunity to cut the deficit within one. Yep. He has struggled this game after coming off a career-high 27 points against Pepperdine. He had 15 points last week against San Diego State. Gets the second to fall. Two. the Titan squad right now, all I'm thinking in my head is stop, score, stop. And Aaron Deloney will call a timeout. Vermont has two left. The Titans have three. We'll step aside for a quick timeout. 61 to 60. Vermont leads Cal State Fullerton. Had him out in possession of the basketball when we return. 61 to 60. Vermont leads Cal State Fullerton back inside historic Titan Gymnasium. Carolyn Gill, Jonathan Rifkin with you. Foul trouble plaguing both teams right now, but the Catamounts have Finn Sullivan fouling out and a couple more players with four fouls. You're looking at Ferrillo with four fouls along with Duncan, Gibson, and that's just, again, too many players in foul trouble. Here's Gibson in possession. Catamounts lead by one, looking to extend. Duncan swings. Back to Gibson with 12. High post, Dylan Penn 
looking for some space against Garrison Wade with seven. Dumps it down low. Gibson ran out of real estate. He crossed the out-of-bounds line, and that is a good defensive stand by the Titans. You can hear the gym in here. Well, we can hear the gym in here just shouting, defense, defense. They can hear the gym, too. All right, great. Well, if we, you're shouting at home, a Titan fan, you're yelling defense, too. That's the kind of defense the Titans need to continue. We want to hear you game. yelling defense at home is what Carolyn is saying. Yes. Here is Jalen Harris switching hands, hits it. Titans lead by one. Elevating, gliding, defined gravity is Jalen Harris. And boy, did they need that. Here's Dylan Penn looking for a response. Penn against Wade, lost his footing, gets it up, gets it to fall. Great response by Dylan Penn, and Vermont will burn their penultimate timeout. So now teams trade, you get a couple of games under your belt. Nine newcomers for the Titans, but both teams right now matching each other's energy. Right, 100%. And that's the thing about these newer teams is on any given night, somebody can show up and show out. Torrey San Antonio held without a field goal here in the second half after having 15 first half points. Here's Jalen Harris. He had a layup on the last possession. Right sold of Lee. And how about this frivolous Catamount defense right now? Forcing some pristine ball movement by the Titans. Lee backing down. Lee elevating. Can't hit too hard off the board. Rebound goes to Duncan. And a big opportunity here for Vermont. Slowing the pace down is Penn. And right now, everybody on the bench telling Vermont, just, just calm down. Get the best possible shot here with 15 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Dylan Penn. Free throw line. Stops. Kicks. Deloney all the way into the corner for three. Fiorillo no good. Offensive rebound by Duncan and a reset here for Vermont. You cannot give up a rebound like that in this type of situation. Catamounts in control of the lead and the basketball. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Dylan Penn searching for some space. Penn with four. Back out. A long three by Duncan. Off the back iron. Vincent Lee secures. Titans with an opportunity for a two for one and to take the lead. Time out, Diedrich Taylor and Cal State Fullerton. Whew. I know we were sweating before, Carolyn, but it's getting quite hot here inside Titan Gymnasium. Oh, yeah. Other side for the Catamounts, it's Cam Gibson, Robin Duncan, Nick Fiorillo, Dylan Penn, and Aaron Deloney. Finn Sullivan has fouled out. And that is a big point of notice. He's their best defender. Here we go. Latrell Wrightsold doing the honors. In no rush right now to get the shot off. They are looking for the lead. This is a smart play by D. Dick Taylor. And Deloney trying to hound Wrightsold right now. Lee with the screen. Finding Harris. Looking for the lead. He got it to fall. And Diedrich Taylor immediately calls a timeout. That was the same exact shot that Jalen Harris hit last year in the game winner against UC Irvine. Pay attention because there could be some implications on December 7th when USC and Cal State Fullerton meet. But right now, we got a game to finish. 64-63, no shot clock, 18 seconds to go. It's on Dylan Penn. Will Vermont hold for the final shot? Will they look to get a quick one? Great defensive disruption. Jalen Harris almost had it. And I believe that ball was tipped by Deloney prior to it going out of bounds, which means it's Titan basketball, and the Catamounts will have to foul. Yeah, just miscommunication on the offensive end. He looks like he threw a pass for a backdoor cut. So Jalen Harris hits the go-ahead basket and gets the pass disruption. Latrell Wright still takes the inbound. He gets hounded. Dylan Penn will get called with a foul after taking a shoulder to the chest and that will send Latrell Reitzel to the free throw line. No matter what, it will still will be a one possession game. Now, obviously you'd like him to hit one, two would be the, the, the proper amount. Right, but the way Fullerton has shot free throws tonight, you're hoping, and if you're at home, you're praying that they hit these two free throws right now. Latrell Reitzel, a junior for this team, has had two really good years with this program. Looking to be a key cog in Dedrick Taylor's system here in year number three. And Coach Taylor will call his team to the sideline. Both teams with one more timeout. And now the Titans will be called to the floor. Jalen Harris could be the hero. 
Game not over yet. Vermont has shooters. We have seen threes from Matt Verretto, from Nick Fiorillo, and Dylan Penn. Reitzel can't get the home bounce. So the best that he can do is make this a two-point lead. You're going to want to get a defender in, like, so we can see Lee checks back in for Jones. You're going to want to get your bigs out there, not only to secure that rebound on the last shot, but just to make sure you have the utmost amount of defense needed. And he hits the second one, thankfully. All right, here we go. Dylan Penn, his team trailing by two with six. Dylan Penn with five. Dylan Penn for the tie. He gets it to fall. 3.5 to go. The Titans have a timeout. They are not going to use it for the win. Right still, no good. And we are headed to overtime inside Titan Gymnasium. In the wise words of John Rothstein, I hope you have your night. I need to make sure that, again, I locate where the hot heads are. San Antonio was hot in the first half. We don't know who's going to show in this overtime, but Harris and Lee have been the offensive threats for the Titan squad. No Finn Sullivan. He fouled out for the Vermont Catamounts. No Nathaniel Bastion. He fouled out for Cal State Fullerton. The tip goes to Vincent Lee and the Titans. Here's Latrell Reitzel. I'll give you the starting five in just a moment. Here's Vincent Lee on the high post. Nick Fiorillo will match up. Double comes. Swung up top to Jalen Harris with 15. Harris all the way to the rack. Floats it up. Gets the roll. Titans lead by two in the opening possession. It's Jalen Harris, Latrell Reitzel, Vincent Lee, Torrey San Antonio, and Garrison Wade for the Titans. Dylan Penn is joined with Nick Fiorillo, Robin Duncan, Aaron Delone, and Cam Gibson. You have Lee on, on Penn. Yeah, and he gets tripped up. It's going to be on the floor, but fouls do carry over from the second half into overtime, which means a one-on-one -one situation as the ninth team fouls now on the board for Dylan Penn, who has been the star for Vermont here this evening. And that's a smart setup by the Catamounts. You get the switch you want with Lee on Penn, and then you bring it back out to make sure you're able to have a nice clean attack. Dylan Penn on the front end swishes it home. So right now we're just past 10 o'clock on the East Coast. So you know what this is called? This is a little ESPN Plus After Dark, baby. Oh, sucky, sucky now. We all appreciate right. all of our friends out in Vermont staying up late on a Sunday night to enjoy some quality basketball with us. 67 to 67 is where we stand. Dylan Penn gets both to fall. Boy, what a ball game. What an opening weekend for Cal State Fullerton. Taking down Pepperdine in exciting fashion. Underdogs coming into this game against the AEC favorites. Jalen Harris tees up a triple. Off right. And wisely, Robin Duncan will let it go out of play. You see Harris just taps his chest. Saying, he wanted the heat check. Yeah, yeah, he was feeling it. Yeah. No stranger to big shots. Hit the game-winning shot last year against UC Irvine. Max Jones will check out, and Jalen Harris will take a seat, maybe trying to get him to calm down just a little bit. Deloney and no rush right now as he crosses the timeline. Deloney into the middle. What a feed and what a jam. Nick Fiorillo going stride for stride. It's a solid two-man game right there. Gotta like the monster jam. Little pick and roll. Titans back on the perimeter. It was a loud dunk, but only counts for two nonetheless. In the corner, Wade feeds it to Lee. Double comes back out. Right so lecture pass. Torrey San Antonio shakes off the three. Faces the basket, puts it up. It's short. Duncan rips down the board. Double comes. Duncan in trouble. And I believe he got a timeout off. He did. So smart play by Robin Duncan. With his back against the wall to utilize the timeout. One more timeout left for possession of the basketball. Bestowed upon the name back in 1928, the University of Vermont did. And right now, how about the offense for the Titans? Eight for 16 from beyond the three. On the other side, though, Vermont has hit 10 triples and route to a two-point lead. And Dylan Penn, the pebble in the shoe of the Titans this evening, back in possession. Deloney will take it from it. High screen, turns the corner, extra pass. Penn thought about a three, Wade closes. And a foul is called. Maybe a little bit of wrist contact as that feed was made on the outside, but now two free throws for Vermont as that is the double bonus foul for Cal State Fullerton. 
been pretty solid on the free throw line tonight. Going seven for 12. Cassie Fullerton going 17 for 29. Not a great number. I mean, it's good that you're getting to the free throw line, but you got to hit them. Especially going into overtime. I'm sure you don't want to, you want to forget about it, but you definitely left some points on the floor in that first. Penn goes one for two, remains a one possession ball game. A break there for the Titans, but you have to find a way to capitalize. Here's Latrell Wright, so Jalen Harris remains on the bench. Max Jones. Wade trying to find Vincent Lee. They know the double will come. Great denial by Penn, but eventually they get it. Jones thought about the three, gives it up. Ten on the shot clock. Reitzel matched up with Duncan, penetrates, gets stripped by Duncan and secured by Gibson. Great defense by Robin Duncan, who has really stepped up here in overtime. And now Dylan Penn in no rush. His team leads by three. Penn into the corner, tipped up and out by Max Jones. Active hands by Jones. And this crowd has been active all evening long. A little bit stymied right now for Vermont leading. Now there are a ton of green shirts in the crowd. Vermont does have a large Los Angeles alumni base. They're actually holding an alumni dinner prior to USC's game on Tuesday. And they have shown out in droves to support the Catamounts here at Cal State Fullerton. Deloney on the perimeter. Reitzel picks him up. Goes right at Reitzel. Reitzel gets the block. Titans with an opportunity to cut into the deficit or even tie. Jalen Harris is back into the ball game. Here he is in possession. Vincent Lee turns, flips, gets it to fall. And it's back to a one-point ball game. Solid hook shot by Lee. Not even hook shot, just solid turn and peak shot by Lee to see that the he had the height over the defender. And gets it back. Takes the screen from Deloney on the shoulder. Deloney. A long three is short. And that'll be out of bounds. An opportunity for the Titans back in possession with a buck and a half remaining. To retake the lead here. And that's one of those shots where you love it if it goes in, and if it doesn't, you might have liked a better shot in that situation. But knowing your player, you have a player like Deloney, probably live with that one. Lee on the high screen, back to Reitzel. Torrey San Antonio been with, held without a field goal since the first half. All the way to Garrison Wade. Ten on the shot clock for Harris. Harris being denied the paint with five. He's going to have to put this one up. He will. Looking for the lead. It falls! Jalen Harris! Unbelievable. Here we go. 60 seconds to go. Two-point ball game in overtime. Dylan Penn will be facing some full-court pressure. He'll be the inbounder. T.J. Hurley scurrying up the field, Aaron Deloney, or I guess up the court, Aaron Deloney's there with him. Here's Deloney on the inbound, back to Penn. No Finn Sullivan, he fouled out. It has been the Dylan Penn show for the Catamounts. Here's Deloney all the way, extra pass into the corner, looking for a lead. Cam Gibson cashes it home. And that's just a great response by the Catamounts. Like we said, if Penn was going to be locked down. From Jalen Harris. And the Titans will, back, will be back in possession with a 14-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Max Jones is out there to provide some extra offense. No Torrey San Antonio on the court right now for the Titans. And right now they're looking for the lead, not for the two for one. Jalen Harris again, scurries around a screen. Reitzel into the middle, back out to Jones, puts it to the deck. Jones flips it up and in. The transfer from the University of Tampa gives the Titans a lead. No shot clock, 15 seconds to go in the ball game. No timeouts for Vermont. Here's Dylan Penn with 12. Dylan Penn backing his way in, back out to Deloney. An opportunity for Robin Duncan. Five for Deloney, three for Deloney. Two for Deloney, he flips it down for the win! Duncan got fouled with .1 seconds on the clock! Rather, the forward from Scarborough, Maine. 
Mr. Maine basketball semifinalist in his third season. And they put 0.8 seconds left on the clock, by the way. And he gets the roll. So there will be time for a shot for the Titans. No timeouts left. This is for the lead. He misses, and we're headed to double overtime. Oh my goodness. Nick Fiorillo wow. was rattled. And we're gonna step aside and recoup. Latrell Reitzel out there for the Titans. There, by the way, Vermont's doing this all without Finn Sullivan, who, tra who fouled out. That is a huge deal. And some resiliency by the Catamounts. Vincent Lee almost jumped the block. Fred Lurillo is out there with Robin Duncan. Dylan Penn. How about Jalen Harris stealing the tip? Cam Gibson is out there as well with Aaron Deloney. Double overtime in the first ever matchup between these two fantastic programs. Max Jones turns the corner. It, extra pass to Harris. Puts it to the deck, flips it up. Can't get the roll, gets the board. And then whistles blow. And they call an offensive foul. They call it on Jalen Harris. They're saying he extended his left arm. Both teams in the double bonus the rest of the way. This will be free throws for Vermont. The last thing you want to do if you're the Titans is give free points here to Dylan Penn and the Catamounts. So now they're checking something at the scorer's table. The stats aren't working in the building. It's being kept on the side, so they're having trouble keeping track of the foul count. As Dylan Penn will line up for the first of his two. Gets the roll. Dylan Penn tonight, 38 minutes, 8 for 15 from the field. He has 23 points now. His career high is 38. That came against Central Arkansas. As he gets the second to fall, Catamounts lead by two. Jalen Harris turns the corner. Up against contact, no call. How about the follow by Max Jones? Athletic play. That's a great follow there. You can see the countermounts. Everybody's just looking at the shot, but Jones sneaks in there and is able to get the put back. Max Jones has come up huge in a myriad of ways so far in this ball game, his defense and his late game scoring. Here's Nick Ferrillo. Nice pass down low on the give and go. How about Aaron Deloney? Those two have hooked up a few different times this evening. And that's great spacing by the countermounts having both players in the corner, leaving that paint wide open. Vermont fans in attendance, Channing defense. Right soul picks up his dribble. Swings it back out to Jones with 15 on the clock. Titans struggling to penetrate right now with eight. Vincent Lee, typically the guy they get the ball to. Here's the switch to Harris with four. Harris with three, into the corner. Right soul wide open, gets it to fall. Titans lead by one. And that's a great decision by Harris there to be able to see that the whole Catamount defense is sucked in the paint. What I like from right so is that he doesn't just sit in the corner. He slides up a bit to where Harris can make the pass. Both teams trading punches, trading leads. What a ball game we have been so fortunate to be a part of. Good defense by Max Jones again stepping in front clogging the baseline, forcing that ball out of play. And that's where he's supposed to be. You, If you're in that position on the weak side, you cannot allow that pass to get to that baseline. I know from plenty of drills in practice, uh, you cannot let that pass get there from the from the weak side. This is a very tough ball to pass in, but a good job by Duncan to get it in quick. Deloney lines one up. He gets fouled. Jalen Harris can't believe it. And that's going to set up Aaron Deloney, a very good free throw shooter for three free throws. Diedrich Taylor beside himself on the sideline. And that's just a tough call there. I mean, you see Harris just looking to contest the shot, and he might have just got him on the hand just a bit, just a bit. But the rest are down there. They have their eye. They can see it from, from where 
They're roughing that. Deloney with an opportunity to give his team the lead, hits the first. Averaged a hair over seven points per game last year. He shot 40% from three. He was four for five from beyond the arc against Brown in the season opener. He gives Vermont the lead with one more free throw pending. And checking out is Dylan Penn. That's going to bring in TJ Hurley. Deloney can't hit the third. It's a one-point ball game. Boy, there has been quite a lit on the basket for both these teams and big opportunities tonight. Jalen Harris will do the honors up top. Double comes, flips it to right, so Vincent Lee was open for a moment. They swing it to Jones. Jones on the baseline, draws a double into the corner, right, so Garrison Wade will try a three. It's short. Vincent Lee rips down the board. The putback no good. He gets fouled. And Vincent Lee, who has struggled from the free throw line with an opportunity to give his team the lead. And that's a big time old board right there, especially when you struggle to get a last second chance points. And again, just from the from reaching in right there from Ferrillo, you can't have that when you're trying to contest one of those shots. But Wade, great job on Lee to be poised and patient and try to get that shot off. So if we can get some shots into the rim on these free throws. Yeah, this is why you practice your free throws, kids. I know everybody wants to shoot threes, but in a game like this where free throws may decide the difference. I got a fun fact for you. So let's hear it. We have this drill called pressure free throws in practice to where if you miss, you're at the, you're at the free throw line by yourself, everybody else on the baseline. If you miss, we all have a down and back or some kind of running to do. If you make it, the safe, you're safe the next person goes. Definitely prepares you for moments like these, and he banks it in. I told you, he did that twice last week against San Diego State, and I, I know Dedrick Taylor told us it wasn't intentional. I really think it was. I think this is so he knows it's going to go in the basket. If you hit it right on that circle, it's going to go in every time, and a second one just like that puts the Titans on top by I one. I told you, this guy has mastered the art of the bank free throw. By the way, Michelle Daishimeye will check in. Number 24 for some very important minutes. Deloney into the corner. For three, it's Duncan. It's short. Right so with the board. Titans have the lead and the ball. Garrison Wade loses it. I think he may have gone away with a travel. Torrey San Antonio was fouled nonetheless, and Torrey is headed to the line. I mean, Garrison Wade transported with that ball, and he's smiling knowing he got away with it. You see him lose it, and he trips of overtime. So Second what, overtime. whatever the replay review was, it didn't change the result on the floor. So Torrey San Antonio back at the free throw line for two massive free throws. You could hear a pin drop right now, with the exception of one Vermont fan who was hitting a seat. Which, I mean, if I was on that side, I'd do everything I could to try and make Tory miss as well. I mean, San Antonio, who was just on fire for the Titans in the first half, it would uh, clinch some clutch free throws in the oh, second you, one. Oh, the broadcaster jinx. Welcome to the world of broadcasting, Carolyn. I know you're a newbie. That's going to happen a lot. 82 to 80, 120 seconds to play. Dylan Penn with his team trailing in possession. Dylan Penn against Vincent Lee. Dylan Penn stops, turns, flips, scores. We're tied at 82. That's just a tough shot. What I did like about that shot, though, he was able to get it far away enough and flip it over the hands of Lee. The Titans have played a quadruple overtime game, that game against Cal Poly a couple of years ago. They have not been back to anything over double overtime since. Here's Vincent Lee on the high post, back out, Reitzel puts it to the deck, flips it up, draws contact. They call it on the floor. It's sort of arbitrary, though, because he gets two free throws regardless. But a good heads-up play by Latrell Reitzel to draw contact nonetheless. I mean, when you're in a position like this where both teams are in the bonus, I'm attacking every time. I'm not going to settle for a three. I'm going to try to at least get an and one or get to that free throw line. Right, so calmly hits the first. Minute and a half remaining. Vermont has USC on the horizon. Cal State Fullerton will be at Pacific. Both teams will love the momentum of a win like this, but right now it's the Titans leading by two with a minute 30 to go. 
little full court pressure here by Coach Diedrich Taylor's squad. Dylan Penn, the gunner. Gibson takes the inbound back to Penn. Penn has been a force to be reckoned with this evening offensively. And we'll see if he can whip up some more magic. Here he is, down the lane against San Antonio. No good, foul is called. And Dylan Penn, who has been living at the free throw line, will get two more. Seems like they call it every time somebody goes up. And somebody hits the deck. And hits the deck, yeah. yeah. And that's just a tough call there. And As you can see, he yeah, is able to get to the middle on that one and get the inside step on Antonio. And it could have been that second hand, maybe that was just on the player. And Dylan Penn misses the first. Plenty of ball game left, but the best he can do is cut the deficit to one. Torrey San Antonio takes a seat, a little offense for defense. Latrell Weitzel will come back in. Penn calmly hits the second. It's a one point ball game, a minute 18 to play. And here's Latrell Reitzel. Resiliency on both sides on display on a Sunday night. Only one can walk away a winner though. And right now it's the Titans in the driver's seat. Here's Vincent Lee up top. Harris draws the double. Still puts it up, up against contact. It's good and one. Count the basket. Jalen Harris. He's going to have to go see a chiropractor because he has put this team on his back. Got to get to Harris or really, again, stepping it up from that first half. And it's just being able to come in and just be such a clutch player for the Titans tonight. Sixth man of the year in the conference a season ago. He was asked to step up and be the team's offensive output this season. And boy, has he stepped up. And it seems that same pattern of him coming out, getting to see what's going on in the game, and then coming right back in, that same kind of, that's the kind of advantage you get to have as, as a sixth man. You see what's already going on on the field, excuse me, on the court, and then you get to come in and see exactly where you need to contribute. Ilyri Iofalei checks back in here for Vermont. And one is good. It's a four-point ball game with 61 seconds to play. Dylan Penn has been the bulk of the offense in the overtime periods in possession. Swings it back out. And the three clinks off the back iron. Torrey San Antonio tracks down the rebound. There is about 17 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. And yeah, that is a good foul by Dylan Penn. Two free throws for Torrey San Antonio. It's the necessity now for the Vermont Catamounts to try and extend this game. And like we've seen tonight, the Titans have kind of struggled with some free throws, but the last times they have been there, they've been efficient. These two free throws would certainly make it quite tough on Vermont. And San Antonio, a very good free throw shooter, hits the first. What a story for Torrey San Antonio. Really has been struggling offensively, especially last season. Coming off of an ankle injury, his defense is what propelled this team to a one-point win in the tournament championship against Long Beach State. He's also a show host on our uh, preseason show, so he does a little on and off the court. And play is stopped right now. Both teams do have a timeout. I just think, that, oh, you know what? The official apparently is supposed to touch the ball before it gets inbounds. This is one of those rules where it just makes it, I understand that you're an official, but this isn't about you. This is about the guys <laughs> on the court right now. Let them play. Here's Aaron Deloney. Seven second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Deloney can't hit the three. San Antonio pulls down the board. All the way up, Vincent Lee. The icing on the cake. Titans lead by eight with 20 seconds to go. Early will try a three. It's no good, and that will do it. Cal State Fullerton makes up a 10 point deficit. In the second half, Jalen Harris ties the ball game in regulation. Jalen Harris hits a three. 
And then Robin Duncan hits the go-ahead free throw with .9 seconds left to force double overtime. And what I like to see, too, is those back-to-back -back boards from Antonio. That's what has been an issue for the Titans throughout the game, too. Second chance points. But securing those boards not only allow for the Titans to come back down with a chance to win, but also the monster slam for Vincent Lee. Harrison Wade missing the first. Harrison Wade, his numbers won't be incredibly high offensively, but his plus is going to be high because this guy impacts the game in other ways. Deloney will glide all the way to the basket, an easy two for him. And here's Latrell Wrightsell with 10. And I think Vermont, nope, they're gonna foul him. TJ Hurley trailing Wrightsell, makes some contact, and Latrell Wrightsell will have a chance to pad the stats. 92 to 85, who saw that score? Now I know we played the double overtime, but boy, both teams have really scored at a high clip. College basketball is back, Carolyn. It doesn't get much better than this. <laughs> I'm just excited to be here. And then Rice <laughs> they would hit that first free throw, so I'm even more excited. All right, look at you. It's both. 95-85. 94-84-5, excuse me. Dylan Penn put up a three, and that's the ball game. Titans stick it out. They're two and one on the season. They win 94 to 85. Tori San Antonio, the first half MVP. Jalen Harris, the second half MVP. As he 